Hi, this is Mish Hancock, and you are listening to Mishmash, a place where I get to talk to the weird, wacky, wonderful people of this world, people I adore and want to know more about. Today, my guest is Mark Engel. He is the owner and creator of Umame, which provides a thousand and one uses with one spoon, bringing deep layered flavors and crunchy bits in one jar. Hi, Mark. Hi, good morning. How are you today? Well, I'm right now I'm feeling hungry. Yeah, me too. I'm always <laughs> feeling hungry. <laughs> so it sounds fabulous what you're doing. It sounds like the kind of thing that even Mish, who is not this great cook person, could come off as a great cook if I had some umami with me. Am I right? Yeah, I think it. Uh, you are correct. It's, it could be your secret weapon. Um, and the ingredients, you know, there's more than uh, 14 ingredients, for example, in the Mexican version. So these layers of flavor just keep on, on going. Uh, if you can so imagine. You've got two yeah. different flavors, right? You've got correct. like a Mexican flavor and then a, more of a Chinese type flavor. That's correct. So it's really interesting, Mish. Um, the Chinese flavor is something that's been around for a long time in Asian culture. Sometimes uh, it's called chili and black bean sauce. And um, what we've done is we took a modern take on it and we contemporized it. And then we said, well, you know, gosh, this is so popular. It's like ketchup is in China, you know, chili and black bean sauce. So we said, well, how do we apply this to other cultures? And our first step was to a Mexican version. And we've got an Indian and Moroccan version on deck, which will be out in October. But Ooh. if we just stay, you know, focused for a moment now, you talk about ease of use. You know, that's the challenge today in particular people have in the kitchen is we're all fatigued. Yeah. Uh, it's like, what do I make next? It's the same old, same old. And, you know, if you think about the Mexican version, for example, it's a blend of four Mexican chilies with ch a focus on chipotle. So you get this smoky flavor, but then there's also toasted uh, cumin and coriander seeds. So you might be eating along and get a pop of a cumin seed on one side of your mouth and then a bite or two later, a pop of coriander. It's like bash, bash, you know, it's like a, a smack in the side of the head. And then when you're getting all this wonderful flavor, there's, um, there's pumpkin seeds that give a little bit of chew. And then you might bump into an orange peel, which gives this citrus flavor. And then to bring it all around together, there's mango for this wonderful finish. Oh so we, we talk about the organoleptic properties. And so there's crunchy chilies, uh, crispy nuts and seeds, and then we have this sweet finish. And that's sort of how we applied um, design thinking to these products. Okay, so you have said so much. I want to go back Sorry. and talk a little bit. No, I love it. <laughs> so first of all, organoleptic. Yes. I must know this word. So organoleptic. Tell me more. Yes. So it's about what's happening in your mouth. You know, so we eat with our eyes, with our nose, with our, our the texture in our mouth. Right. And very, you know, very few people think about what is the experience that I'm having in my mouth? Like what's the size of the particulate? Is it crunchy? Is it crispy? Is it chewy? And so we stepped out and we said, we created what I call the total product experience. And what it means is you think about from the very beginning, what does it look like, taste like, smell like, feel like, sound like, and then kinesthetically, that's the sixth one. You know, what's the experience I have when eating it? And we have been incredibly thoughtful with everything about this product. Um, and so umame, interestingly enough- I was, is, gonna, ask, I was gonna ask you yep. to explain that as well. Yeah, so, so umame is the fifth taste. Mm -hmm. um, so you have sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. Uh, umame was discovered by a Japanese scientist um, about a hundred years ago. And what it is, is it's these glutamates and they occur naturally in things like Parmesan cheese, sun-dried tomato, and fermented products. Um, in its chemical form, it's MSG, and some okay. people think that's bad, but it occurs naturally in some of these products. So we've taken natural umami in the form of fermented black beans and put it in our product. And what umami is, think of it as the conductor in an orchestra. So it takes sweet, sour, salty, and bitter and elevates all these so they all sing together. And so, you know, you started out by saying you're not a cook. So beginner cooks love the ease and convenience. One spoon, yeah. bam, and you have all this amazing flavor. But what's also interesting is um, experienced cooks and chefs, they're amazed 
at the complexity of what's happening here, as I described the coriander and the cumin and the seeds and the crunchy and the chewy and the sweet. Um, so even chefs, um, there's a local chef, Ben Peremba, who runs many restaurants here. Okay. Um, he carries this product in his store. And he was telling me just the other day that he uses the Mexican at home. If that's not a vote of confidence, I don't know what is, because he's that one of my favorite thing. chefs in town. And you guys have, so I want to talk about your website a little bit, because on your website, you have tons of amazing recipes. What else I really liked was the whole idea of Chinese leftover CPR. I mean, <laughs> right? Because you have leftovers and you're like, well, I just ate that yesterday. So right. now it feels like I'm just eating the same thing again. But then you just add as you put one spoonful, one spoonful. with all these, all this amazing flavor and say the word, I want to know the word again. Organoleptic. Organoleptic. I'm going to be oh, saying that a that lot. Oh, that off your tongue. That was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Got it down. Organoleptic. 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 Yeah. Um, I love it. But I think that then you're taking your leftovers and you're bringing in some new flavors. So it's exactly. not, it doesn't taste like, oh, this is what I ate yesterday. Right. right. We say cook once, serve twice. I so love for it. example, like if I make a piece of salmon and I have a family, I have five, three kids, but today I only have one at home. I get a pound and a half because I know that the following day, like yep. if I make salmon and just serve it with rice, I know the following day I can take that other half pound that I cooked, mash it up with a tablespoon of umami and now drop it in a taco. And there you go. I mean, it's a completely different meal. I um, love it. And, and that's nice. So it's not just for Chinese CPR, it's any leftovers. You can transform that meal the next day. Right. And, and then what, I mean, has anybody or any of your fans gotten to you and used it in a really interesting way that you thought, wow, that's inventive? Um, well, we, uh, we say a thousand one uses one spoon. So we thought through quite a bit of them, but I'm really amazed at um, uh, the people using it for like a salad dressing, which is really interesting. Um, and we had a recipe for a salad dressing, but people are being very, very creative um, in, in, in what they're doing with that there. Um, I'm trying to think of, uh, um, that would probably be the, the one that sort of sticks out in my mind. Um, some people are putting it on everything. It's quite addictive. Um, well, it's umame. At, yeah, it's umame. I mean, because what, the, uh, the nice thing is, is if you're sitting at your home and you're a pers one person, you can use it. But if there's five people in your family, some people might like Moroccan, some people like Mexican or Chinese, and everyone can sort of add the twist themselves right. uh, that they want. And, you know, we, it's really about chilies, but it's, these are Tabasco hot. They're not ghost pepper hot. So they're meant to right. be a backbone of chili, but the flavors are really what shine through. I have this thought, tell me if this is a good thought or open this, don't do that. But I have this thought of putting it in the oil before I make popcorn. You know what? Um, I've tried that and it's actually very good. Okay, um, awesome. I'm doing and, it. <laughs> yeah, and um, so so the oil we used, it's a very expensive product, Mish. And, um, but if you were to look at, if you were to Google Chili Crisp, it's somewhat of a nascent category. It's not really existent. Um, it's small and it's a very expensive product to make. We, we took um, liberty to put only the highest quality ingredients here. These are handmade in small batches. And the oil is one of the most important things. It's our number, the first ingredient. We used expeller pressed high Lake sunflower oil. Um, ah. It's healthy, yep. but most importantly, it is a high flash point, which means you can stir fry with it. Okay. It is also has a low freeze point, which means that you can put it in the fridge and it doesn't get solid. I don't know if you've ever like made dressing with olive oil and all of a sudden when you take it out, you have to wait till it gets liquid again. Yep. That's not the case here. It goes in the fridge once you open it and not that it'll last long in the fridge, but it stays liquid. Um, and so that's, that's really, um, you know, the good thing for it. But one jar feels like it would last quite a while. I it mean, does. I guess it depends on how much you're using it, but that it's, it does, it's not like you use it twice and you're like, oh gosh, right. I'm already done. But that's, the, that's interesting. So we, our jar is 9.2 ounces. It's actually a fairly sizable jar. The reason is we wanted to be an e-commerce brand and shipping is almost as expensive as the product. And we wanted to get it out all over the country. And the smaller you do the jar, the more shipping cost. And so that's really what drove us to this. You know, again, we, we thought about a lot of it. You know, and it's interesting. You said your question about popcorn. 
I love that question because not only is the product good for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and making a snack, right? But it's 80% solids. I don't know. Um, it's, if you can see here, it's 80% solids yes. and 20% oil. What's interesting is I have some customers who write me and say, I've used up all the oil and now I have these solids. What can I do? And I say, well, you can add in sunflower oil. And then I have others who write me and say, oh my God, I used up all the solids. What do I do? So people use it in very different ways. You know, you can fry eggs in, or, or make popcorn with just the oil, or you can dig in like my wife and she gets all the solids. So everyone has their own sort of way. If you're lucky enough in your foam home, you have an oil user and a solid user, and then everyone's happy. It balances <laughs> out. Yes. So tell me, how did this come to be? Like, when did Mark wake up and go, I am going to make umami and get into the food business? Yeah. So I've probably spent half my career in the food business, okay. but more importantly, I'm a, I'm a foodie. I think about food 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, when I was 24, um, I, I moved to Taiwan. So this was in uh, 1989. I moved to Taiwan to study Chinese. And my first five words I learned were um, jiro, juro, nyoro, yu, hetsai. And that's beef, chicken, pork, fish, and vegetable. And I would go through the, the, the cafeteria line. And if it wasn't one of those, I'd be like, not having it. And so I would move on. Um, and then I learned food Chinese because I was always going to the markets and the restaurants. And back then, like a, I was in a small village like there were not a lot of white people in this village. So people were very open that I was trying to learn Chinese. Um, and so um, really got exposed to a lot of different recipes. Um, I've done all the cooking for my family of five. We raised three kids and I was always looking for hacks, Mish. And this was one of them because I would make it for my family. And you know, very quickly I could come home from a busy day at work, whip something up and then just with this one ingredient. So instead of having to chop 14 different onions, shallot, garlic, nice. right? And have all these things, I could make a batch and then it would last me. And then friends and family would ask for it. Um, so after working for others for 25 years and leading innovation teams, I'm like, you know, it's time to do this for myself. I love it. So, love and it. I'm happy to share it with people because I wanna feed people. I, you know, people have said, Mark, why don't you open a restaurant? I'm like, hell no, I'm, that's not for me, but I wanna feed- Restaurant in a jar. <laughs> yes. I want to feed as many people as they possibly can. Um, that's my passion, you know, and, and let them experience family and eating. Uh, and this really is, um, is a great beginning. I have a whole product roadmap, but this really is a great beginning to, you know, allowing people to travel, try exotic things in the safety yep. of their own home. And what I love is, um, I mean, so you kind of did your own market research in a sense, because, you know, family and everybody's like, I want can you make me some of that? I need some of that. And so you're thinking, I've got something here, but you have big news to share. Yes, yes. Um, you know, uh, it's been uh, an interesting road. Being an entrepreneur, I have to tell you, Mish, um, having worked at big companies has been exciting, but it is a roller coaster. I mean, one yes, day, I <laughs> one day I'm literally packing boxes. The next day I wake up in the morning and my email provider says, we're shutting you down because you have too many bounced emails. And by the way, I don't have a technical person. And so I have to go figure this out myself. So, um, so that's the process. The good news is having run a food company before, I have no interest in the manufacturing um, side. So I have someone doing that for me who does a great job. So I've taken that off my plate. Okay. Um, but you know, it's, it's a process. It's an interesting process. I forgot the question that you asked though. Sorry. It's okay because yeah. we'll, you're, you're, we'll, we'll get back to it. What but, was it? Cause I want to answer it. It was a great question. Well, let me just say, <laughs> I thank you for addressing the entrepreneur thing, because I mean, I have lots of, I'm an entrepreneur. I have lots of entrepreneurs on here and it's, and I always say, if you want to develop yourself, run a company on right. your own, it hits you everywhere. It hits you physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. You, it, it is your own self-help. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's so interesting that you say that because I always aspired for this, but never realized the true sense of that. And I, I always had respect for entrepreneurs, but now I'm blown away, literally blown away for anybody who builds anything because what we do. Exactly. it is so hard. I mean- if you're interested, for example, in getting involved on the digital space, you know, 
I'm a classically trained marketer from General Mills. I know how to brand, I know how to market, and you can tell that from my website. But getting just Google alone, Google has like five different assets. They have analytics, they have Google My Business, they have, um, they have their, their store. You know, getting all these to connect yes. is so, so hard. And then all of a sudden you, you make a small change and then it rejects everything and you have to start from scratch. And now I'm not even talking about like linking Facebook or Instagram. I mean, <laughs> it is, it's taken me six weeks to do this with help from other people. It is so, so hard. Can I just say to everyone out there, I did not pay Mark to say this, to talk about <laughs> digital media and Sorry. how difficult it is. No, 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 because right. this is my company. I, my company yeah. is 100th Monkey and that's what we do. And so when people are like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh my gosh, you have no idea. If I put a camera on myself and my staff every day, you would be like, those that's just constant back and forth, one thing, another, looking at this hooking stuff and it's, it's, it is amazing to when you get that recipe on recipe on yep. how do I hook all of this various digital this and that's together to create this wonderful picture of what the heck is yes. really going on. <laughs> I can't tell you. So Mish, it is, it is one of the hardest things I've done in my career. Um, and then here's the great thing. When you've got it all done, Google decides to change their algorithm. And that's exactly it. So you're constantly playing catch up. And it's yes. like, you know, we'll get clients that will call and go, what, what is going on with Facebook? I'm like, oh, how I wish I could intelligently answer that for right. you. My answer is it's Facebook. Right. Let's figure it out. Give it some time. And sometimes like sometimes you give it some time and it magically all comes back together. And then sometimes you're like, wow, they're really doing something different. I have to figure out, Mish you know? They rejected this product four times. They accepted it and rejected it four times. They thought it was alcohol. <laughs> now, what's interesting is they accepted the Mexican one. They accepted the double Chinese one, but this single Chinese one, they accepted, rejected it, accepted, rejected it. Yep. You know, they accepted it and then I put it on Instagram and then they rejected it. And then I, 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 I said, you know, can you, I appealed like four times and then they were so apologetic, but it's just crazy. So sorry, we, we digress. No, 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 but it's, but it's true. I mean, and, and, it is. and I, you know, I, I feel this pain a lot. So yes. I like talking about it, but I'm going to go and you're, you're going to be surprised when you forget that question I answered. Yeah. You have big news to share. Oh, yes. Sorry. I took a <laughs> this tangent. Is, this because... is like awesome. You have to share yeah. it. So um, so we, we were nominated as a finalist, which may not seem like a big deal, but it was out of 800 people as best new condiment. Yay. And, um, you know, more importantly, it was with a group called the New Hope Media. And they are the largest sort of, they're the leaders in what's called the natural food space. So they sponsor what's called Expo East and Expo West. These are the two biggest natural food conferences in the US. And with COVID, they're not happening now. So they've done virtually. But right. yesterday, they announced us as a winner. Um, you know, and, and they evaluated on innovation and integrity and inspiration. And you know, we're competing against like Patagonia provisions. And so, and we're only five months old. So it is beyond exciting. Oh man, um, that's awesome, Mark. Yeah, and moves us closer to wanting to feed everybody or give everybody the tools to like eat great tasting food easily in their own home. No So yes, kidding. thank you, yes. I love it. Well, congratulations. Thanks. It was Yay. a team effort, by the way. I have a great, I have a great team of people that I'm working with. You, none. Incredible innovation cannot be done alone. It's about collaboration. So true. It's about teamwork. So I had a vision and there's no way I could have done this without um, um, the chef I'm working with who was my boss 30 years ago and with the design team from uh, the agency, you know, and, and it's just great people. I love it. Well, congratulations, sir. Thank you so much. So Very I have exciting. some other fun questions I want to ask you. You're a little sure. outside the box, um, right. but or should we say outside the jar? Outside I think the that would jar, make more sense I love that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so you you tell me about Taiwan. If I go to Taiwan right now, where would you tell me to? What should I visit? What should I make sure to see? Yeah. So um, so I was there 27 years ago. Um, it's and, probably changed you know, a little bit. It's changed a lot. Um, when I got there, there was one high rise. Now there's like 50. Yes. It is a beautiful country. They have some of the tallest mountains in Asia outside of the Himalayas. Um, it is a beautiful island and the people are 
the nicest people in the world. They have something called wrenching way, which is human kindness. Um, they welcomed me into their homes. Um, they were kind and patient with me. Um, they, they were some of the best days in my life. I was there three years. And in my third year, the woman who I married, who's a St. Louisan, she came out and lived there for the third year we were there together. I said, listen, I want to spend time in Asia. So she came out and lived with me. Um, you can go to the beaches. You can go to the mountains. They have bamboo forests. Um, it is a, a wonderful place. What's fascinating, though, Mish, is you know China is um, going to dominate the world economically, mm -hmm. for sure. And that's what really drove me there 27 years ago. I'm like, this is happening. You really couldn't go to China at the time because it was communist. You know, there were more ah. bikes in China than cars at the time. Okay. Um, they had two currencies, you know, one for the people, one for foreigners. So I went to Taiwan to study Chinese. And, um, but what was fascinating back then was Taiwan was about a decade ahead of China. So, you know, people had refrigerators. In China, they didn't, right? And yeah, so what yeah. was a, a fascinating microcosm is I would travel to China and I would be like, oh my God, they're five years behind Taiwan. You could predict almost everything. Okay, everyone's going to be adding a refrigerator to their home. Okay, everyone's going to add air conditioning. Okay, people are going to go from bikes to mopeds. It was so fascinating to watch this transition. Um, and I'm so, so grateful, you know, for that opportunity. We ended up going back um, to China. Um, in, so I was there in 80, uh, 89 through 93. And then I went back to live in Shanghai in 99 and 2000. And same thing. Um, it was a fascinating microcosm of where they were. That was 20 years ago. Right. And I've been back several times since. It is an amazing story of like, they bypassed, like they didn't even put copper lines for phones and everybody went wireless. They just didn't oh, need wow. to do it. Um, wow. Yeah. And so they are a force to be reckoned with. You know, they have 5,000 years of history. We have yeah. what, 250, yeah. 300, right? Yeah, we're still it's babies. just, we're babies. So um, that's just inspiring for me. And I ate my way through the country. I ate my way throughout all of Asia. I bet. Oh my gosh. Yes. Well, I love, I love the idea of, is it wrenching way? Wrenching way. How do you, you're amazing. Well, <laughs> like organoleptic wrenching way. You're like a natural at this. Um, I, well, I find, I find when you said that, all I could think of was we need more of that. Yes, we do. We need a lot more of that. We need a lot more wrenching way need, uh, here yes. and abroad. Um, just, we yeah. need it. We, yes. We're all in this together, folks. So wrenching way, let's go yes. that way. You wrenching know? way. I love that. Um, all right. So let, I'm going to ask you another question. You ready? All right. Out of the all jar, right. out of the jar question. <laughs> out of the jar question. What's the most useful thing that you own outside of your umami? Most useful thing I own? Um, so uh, I, from a food perspective, I'm a big pressure cooker. Okay. Guy. Um, I love my pressure cooker and it's not an Instapot. Um, I haven't not graduated to the sort of digital version, but it's sort of the same thing. Gotcha. You know, it's so great for last night. I just used it because it was late in the day and I realized I wanted to make a dish with cannelloni beans and I keep dried beans in the house. So the pressure cooker, you know, 23 minutes of pressure cooker. And I went from dry to these wonderful beans. So um, it's a minute, you don't have the instant pot. You have the old, it's not a jiggle top. So I'm somewhere between like sort of the jiggle top that our grandmothers used yep. and this other sort of pressure vessel and That'd then the instant pot. Yeah. So it's my wow. most useful, um, piece of equipment, um, that I own. I love it. I love yes. it. I love it. And who taught you to cook? Um, I had to learn to cook. I hate to say this out of design. My mother, God bless her. And she's still alive. Um, she was not a cook. Okay. And, uh, you know, I got exposed to some good food and I'm like, I got to figure out how to do this. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. I'm both a left and right brain person. Okay. Cooking is my, my creative outlet. Um, it's how I relax. So after a long, stressful day, you know, I'm in the kitchen and I'm highly focused, you know, pulling together <clears throat> five dishes at once is what gives me happiness. Wow. Eating people gives me happiness. So it's just, it's my creative outlet. Um, and that's what, so I just learned, I've never, you know, here's, it's interesting. 
I, I've taken one cooking class in my whole life. That's it. Um, last December for my birthday, I asked, my kids asked me what I wanted for my birthday. And I said, I want you to nominate me for a cooking contest. And so they did. And I won. Oh, fun. But here's the problem. I won Airbnb, chose, I don't know if you saw this on the website, sort of buried. Airbnb um, chose 100 chefs from home chefs from around the world. I was one of them. And we were supposed to be in Italy for a week. Yes. In July. Oh, that didn't happen. It gets even better and even worse. So David Chang, who's a very famous chef from Momofuku, was going to be teaching cooking in Italy with his mother for a week. And then they were going to make a cookbook. My recipe was a fried rice recipe. They were going to make a cookbook of all these hundred chefs from all over the world. And because of coronavirus, it got canceled. I was oh, supposed to be there dang. the first week in July. It was That's so sad. But maybe uh, the universe came back and said, here, we're going to make sure you win this contest. Yes. You know, happen. <laughs> everything happens for a reason, Nisha, I believe. But man, right. but, ooh, like I know. what it's a like, bummer. Oh, that would have been such an amazing, well, maybe it'll come back around, but who maybe. knows when. Yeah. Right? It's, I don't know. Got to roll with it. One day at a time right one now, I'm time. telling you. But yes. I love the idea of umame for right now. It when, is perfect. You know, I mean, so here I live downtown St. Louis. There's restaurants all over the place. Right. And you would think that I'd be just like, woo, right now. But you don't really know who's open and when right. they're open and are they delivering and do, am I doing curbs? I mean, it's all kind of, it's much easier to just stay home right now. Right. Because I'm not quite sure. And so- I will be purchasing some umami and much to the delight of my daughter. Yes. It's like your mother. I'm not like it's cooking. That's time. okay. You can be, a, you but can be great. I love to eat. And if I can find yummy things, <laughs> I can definitely do rice and popcorn. I mean, yes. Here we rice go. and popcorn. So the easy ones though, are on top of her mashed with avocado. I mean, Ooh, you will blow her away. It's so awesome. easy. Um, or you can put it in mayonnaise and mix it with like, a rotisserie chicken for chicken salad. And that goes with either the flavors on top of eggs. It transforms everything. Or I let's just say it. you made um, a frozen entree, throw it in and you'll get that much more flavor. So it, it's incredibly versatile. Um, mix it with vegetables, mm. with rice. Yes, very, very easy. So are you ever gonna make a dessert umame, do you think? So it's so funny you say that. Some people are putting it on ice cream as it is. Oh um, Yeah. Um, so. You know, I hadn't thought about that. A dessert oh, one. So I'm so, a dessert person. Yes. I would love to consult just like you, like Mish, what do you think of this one? You can send me right. samples. I'll let you know. But I told you know, the thing I, I like, love the idea. It's a fun idea. But what I really like is that. So I always think of like a salad as an example. If I'm making a salad and when you said the crunchy bits, thing, I'm like, I always like to have a little bit of crunch. Exactly. Like I think you got to have these different things mixed in with, with this to really make it yummy, you know? Yes, and totally I was agree. so intrigued by, but I was thinking, Ooh, do a dessert one you can put on top of ice cream or mix it in with something to make your popsicles or put it in smoothies or, you know, there's like yes. a million things that you could, you could, Oh my gosh, how fun. I love I it. I love that. So, so that is new. And um, I'm going to add that to my Check roadmap desserts and, you know, you totally, so that's where we really thought about this is we wanted to make sure the organoleptic properties, the whole crunchy, chewy, uh, crispy, you know, we wanted to deliver that for you. Um, right. I'm the same way, you know, um, one of my favorite things to eat, by the way, is a cold hoagie, a cold, you know, um, submarine sandwich with a hot slice of pizza. So you get the crispy of the crunch of the pizza. Then I go for a bite of the hoagie that's cold. And then I go back for a bite of the hot, crispy, crunchy pizza. Then I go for a bite of the chewy cold. I love it. And like, that's my, my kids will tell you that's my deathbed meal. Like when I'm <laughs> on my last breaths, they're going to be feeding this to me by Hoagie for bite. and pizza. Bring the yes. hoagie. And Hoagie a jar and pizza. <laughs> I don't even, yes, a jar of mommy. I don't even need to tell them. I've drilled this into them. That is my final meal. Oh my gosh. Well, Mark, this has been awesome. I, I love your passion around what you Thank do. You. Tell people where they can find umami. Yes. So um, in St. Louis, um, we're in a couple stores. So uh, oh, Bolliards in Maplewood, Civil uh, Alchemy uh, in Maplewood, um, Lusso's, which is a, a gift shop right near the Ritz-Carlton and Clayton. Um, we're in uh, 
Summit Produce at the Farmer's Market in Kirkwood. So we're in a few places, but cool. online, if you want to purchase it or you want to send it online, and we're just at umami.net, and that's O-O-M-A-M-E dot net, O-O. M A M E dot net. That's the phonetic spelling of umami, umami which is U yeah. M A M I, and that's the fifth taste. So I love it. I hope they give it a try. Oh my gosh, I know I will. Thank you so much for your time today and for sharing this awesomeness and your passion. Well, I feel like a winner because now I have um, a whole new line of ideas around dessert. Because um, oh yes, that is awesome. To, I would love to be a taste tester. You're going to be a taste tester for that for sure. <laughs> love I think it. it's well, brilliant. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. And for everyone that's listening out there, you've been listening to Mishmash. We love you and adore you and uh, start practicing some more joy. Thank you. Bye. Bye.